There we go. Push it. Right. Okay. Push it. Everyone push record. Yes. So yeah. So greetings and salutations, my friends, and welcome to the debate about the two topics. Which one was the priority? Was the Trinity, Trinity and the virgin birth, I would guess. We'll be doing that in a separate topic. Yeah, that'll be a separate. Yes, that will be separate. So, which one would you like to discuss first? Trinity. I, I think it's Trinity, the Trinity. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, first, proper introductions. I will introduce myself. I am uh, Bjorn, and I live in Japan with my family. I work as an English teacher. A Swedish guy living in Japan working as an English teacher. <laughs> That's everything. And um, I have a very, very big thirst for knowledge and history. I love history. It's the best thing. Religion, as per se, is not my kind of specialty. It's more like, how to say, the core changes of everything that was happening in history. That's my forte. And um, I have a YouTube channel called Meme as well that I do short audio stories. And that's it about me. Now let's go over to Sean. Please introduce yourselves. My name is uh, Sean Richards. I have been a pastor for two years and a follower of uh, Jesus Christ for the last, oh, uh, let's see. I don't remember how old I am, so we'll just uh, note it's over a decade. But uh, basically, um, because of my Nordic ancestry, I've taken a keen liking not only to the reading of my uh, beliefs and the beliefs of my ancestors, but an effective and critical comparison between the two, of which uh, Denton has been an excellent resource in giving a fair and a straightforward comparison in which we've had wonderful dialogues. Recent video was posted uh, regarding the pagan origins of Christianity, and while I certainly have had these conversations before, uh, I have respect for him to the degree that if he was in error on anything, he would want to know where and when, and I also am wanting to know if I am in misguided in my beliefs or positions that I can also hear where and when. So we're here to learn from each other and resolve our problems, not at the edge of a uh, sword or ax, but at the edge of a pen and a voice. So that's what we're here to do. And that's what I desire to take away from this debate. Thank you, Sean. Denton, your turn. Oh, well, uh, no, I don't see me. Am I up there? No, I see me up the top, not on the main screen. So what is going on there? I'm up here. All of us are seeing you on the main screen. Ah, oh, are you? Ah, oh, that's grand. That's okay. I thought maybe I uh, would see myself. Well, uh, my name's uh, Denton. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Denton's Tales of the Viking Age, which deals, obviously, I suppose, with the Viking Age. Um, more correctly, I should say, with the, the Old Norse people rather than the Viking Age as such. And I try to dispel a lot of the myths and inaccuracies uh, about uh, that era, like horned helmets. And um, I certainly were very interested in, in this debate. As, as Sean has mentioned, I, I put up a, a video there on the sort of pagan connections uh, to Christianity. And uh, I'm not trying to say Christianity was a a pagan religion, but certainly much of its uh, doctrines and ideas do come from uh, the same sort of thing in, in various pagan religions. So that's um, that's uh, pretty much me. And uh, as uh, Sean was saying, um, you know, if either of us can learn something from the other, well, that's a, that's a very good thing. So that's that's my sort of little introductory statement. Okay, thank thank you, Danton. So. The rules of the debate, you will get five minutes, introduction, and uh, rebuttal, and I hope I said it that correctly. <laughs> so, uh, uh, since uh, the one who wanted to start this debate, I think would be mostly fair. I don't have a coin around me, so we don't get to see you. So, Sean was the one who wanted to have this debate. I think it would be fair for him. Yes, I think I think that responds to your video. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, I will as soon as you start talking, I will start the timer, and uh, you can start your own timers if you want. 
it might be a slight delay because of the mm. internet and everything like that. But like I said, I will let you finish your sentence. Okay. So, uh, Sean? Okay, uh, is the Trinity pagan? The short answer is no, the long answer is no. Uh, <laughs> in order to properly define our terms, we first need to make sure we understand what the Trinity is and what pagan is. Uh, of course, going to the dictionary first, if we're going to define pagan, the word just means villager. The uh, etymology or the origin of the word is Latin. It means pagus, which means country, or paganus, which means villager. So it was a very broad term referring to just anyone outside Side of the city. It would be more comparable, say, to the word barbarian, which was a Greek term used to someone who just didn't speak Greek. And uh, the earliest use of the word is in the 14th century, the alliterative Mort Arthur, which uses the term not in regards to theology, but in simply being foreign. Now, our discussion here is about theology, our understanding of the nature, character, and attributes of God. And most world religions are going to express this in one of four ways. The first is going to be in pantheism pan meaning all or everything and theos meaning god an example of this would be hinduism the universe as a whole makes up the one divinity uh, the second form would be tritheism which would be three tri and theos god polytheism is poly or like polynomial meaning many and theos god an example would be asatru or odinism where the azir the vanir the nornin and the giants are all considered in one way or another divine and then finally there is monotheism mono meaning one and theos you get the idea uh, Christianity is the example of what we'll be defining as monotheistic today, and this is affirmed not just because a Christian says so, but because the core and primary documents of Christianity affirm that is the case. In 1 Timothy 2.5, Paul the Apostle, a noted scholar of Judaism, made the observation that there is one God and one Lord, and one by which we are saved, and that is Christ Jesus. In Judaism, which forms the foundation and core claims of Christianity in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, Shema uh, Israel, Elohim Yahweh, Elohim Echad, that of course, or Yahweh Echad, excuse me, uh, that was the Hebrew for hear Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And of course, Jesus himself defines Christianity, which I think he has right to. In Mark 12, 29, when asked, what is the greatest commandment? Uh, that uh, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength after quoting, of course, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. My goal in this uh, opening statement is to first clarify a few concepts, emphasize a few points, and then make three factual statements about the Trinity. First of all, history is going to be best determined by the earliest possible sources we have on the matter. If the earliest sources are later than the concepts being accused of copying, we can't accurately support that statement until more information becomes available, meaning that if we don't actually have on paper, this is what people believed. And Christianity and Judaism, by extension, go before that, you can't say that there was this chain of transmission of beliefs or especially of theology and doctrine. Likewise, uh, I want to clarify that origin determines definition. The guy who came up with something has the right to tell us what that something means. Application is more accurate the closer it is to its founding. So, for example, if we're going to define Christianity based on the Protestants, I could care less. It ultimately comes down to the primary source of whether or not it is found in this book, or rather the books, which is what the Bible means. So, here's what I want to emphasize in the two minutes I have left. Definitions matter. A modern interpretation of paganism doesn't necessarily reflect the beliefs of pagans or Christians in the past in order to establish correlation or causation between the two, especially when the Christian beliefs can be defined with documentation and the pagan sources can't. Likewise, you can't copy from something that came into existence after you, for example, the sagas, the edas, the traditions, the Bhagavad Gita, and so forth. Third, theology matters. If I take terms uh, that belong in a polytheistic, pantheistic, or atheistic worldview and read it into a monotheistic religion, there are fundamental differences between the two by definition. So in this debate, I hope to clarify, first of all, that since Christianity ties its origins into Judaism, and uh, Denton in his video acknowledged that Judaism isn't pagan, then naturally the doctrines gleaned from Judaism, which define Christianity as 
at its core, not in practice, but in doctrine, and its belief in God are as follows. There is one God, first fact. There are three co-eternal persons that can all rightly share the attributes of God, and all these persons are fully God. And I will end my opening statement. Thank you very much, Sean Denton. Oh, well, uh, I'm on, am I? Very good. Um, well, Sean, yes, I thought that was a very that was a very good uh, intro, and I I agree with you when you say about prime, you know, prime sources. Sort of go back, go back to the beginning and get things from where they originated, and. That is something that uh, I, I feel uh, is is quite well summed up. A quote uh, from a gentleman called Eugene Mormon of the Cyprus Bible Institute. And he said, all I tell people is what the Bible says. I do not add traditions and the words of church councils, which are not scripture. And I'm, I'm sure you would probably agree with that. But my... My saying about the, the Trinity, um, that various pagan religions had varying forms of uh, triple ideas, I mean, it is obvious. Um, you have the, the uh, Hindu Trinity, which is identical to the Christian one, not in, not in the makeup of it, not the gods that comprise it. Obviously, you know, the Christians do not have multi-headed gods and, and many arms, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the concept of a, a supreme being who is also three. Um, we also have, for example, like Celtic, uh, Irish Celtic goddesses who were one and three. Uh, again, like the, uh, the Christian version and the, the three thing comes up in so many religions, be it an equilateral triangle or, or whatever. But to go back to, if you like, the source, um, Christianity is scriptural based. It is based on the Bible, the teachings of Jesus. And my point about the Trinity is that if you go to the, the Bible and to the teachings of Jesus, the Trinity is never mentioned. Jesus doesn't mention it. It is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. And yet the, the Trinity is an all important aspect of Christianity to the, to the Catholics, to the Eastern Orthodox, you must believe in the Trinity. If you don't believe in the Trinity, you're not a Christian, you're out, that's it, you have to believe in it. Yet this vital uh, doctrine, which you must believe in, does not appear in scripture. So you have a faith which is scripture based, is based on the teachings of, of Jesus, and yet one of its core principles, something you could say a rock on which it is founded, is not mentioned in scripture. It's not mentioned by Jesus. This is something that is brought into the faith in 381 AD at the Council of Constantinople. And even some of the bishops who took part in that council didn't agree with it. Quite a lot of them didn't. They were chucked out and they were persecuted because Emperor Theodosius wanted to push the thing through. So this is, this is basically uh, my argument from that point of view. In, in, in one way, you could say it doesn't really matter whether the pagans believed in a trinity or not. What really matters is, did the Christians believe in it? And the answer to that is no. They didn't believe in it until 381 AD when the Council of Constantinople told them they believed in it. And uh, that, would be, that would be where I'm, I'm coming from on that one. And I mean, that is going back, as you say, to the source. And I mean, there are a couple of quotes then I will... Uh, have a bit later, but that is that is pretty much my opening opening gambit. I hope that uh, I hope that makes sense. It does to me, of course, because I thought of it. But <laughs> hopefully, it will to you. So, oh, I still got a minute left of chat. Um, but I mean, if if you want to if you want to start the debate of that, uh, Bjorn, go ahead because I think anything I'd have to say would take longer than that anyway. You know? Oh, that's that's well, that's all right then. We can uh, we can continue. So uh, let you have both done your opening statements, and uh, now let's kick off the fun. Sean, <laughs> if you would please. 
All right. Uh, the statement about the Council of Constantinople was brought up in a uh, presentation of the Trinity and the first time that it appears. Now, I noticed that you kept using the interchangeable reference to the word Trinity and the doctrine of the Trinity. The word Trinity first appears in the Athanasian Creed, which was formed by the Bishop Athanasius at the Council, of which you mentioned. But the problem is that the word is meant to describe a doctrine. The word isn't the doctrine. Likewise, uh, you you brought up the Hindu belief in the poem, and let me see if I can pronounce this right, the Karumasa Sabampada, and that dates a full century after the Athanasian Creed. So as per my opening statement, it is a problem to copy from something that wouldn't exist for another hundred years. Mm -hmm. Also note that the word Trimutri, which is translated Trinity, is a Sanskrit term for three forms. That is not what Christians mean by the Trinity. That mm -hmm. is the heresy that is called modalism, which was dismissed not because they were persecuted and kicked them out, but because they asked them, where is that in the Bible? And then they kick them out. But also note as well, the heresy of Arianism that believed that Jesus was a creative being was the actual outcome of those councils. And we have church historians that said it was at a time in history when the whole world groaned and found itself Arian. This is according to the church historian Eusebius. But also noting as well, no Christians believed in the Trinity. That is factually false. While they didn't use the word, they did acknowledge the doctrine. We have early church fathers by the name of Origen, as well as by Polycarp and others who were direct eyewitnesses that recognized a divine three. They used other words, but they recognized the doctrine, and that doctrine is as follows. Uh, first of all, in the Trinity, there is one God, and that is based on Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. Here is real, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. There are no other gods apart from Yahweh. In Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 10, he says, Through before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Isaiah 44 verse 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, I am the first and I am the last, besides me there is no God. Likewise, the title of Father is recognized in Isaiah 64 and verse 8. Behold, uh, but now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter, we are the work of your hand. The Father, the Lord, is recognized as creator, a prerogative that only belongs to God on account of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Mm -hmm. The title of Spirit is recognized in Job 33 verse 4 as having divine prerogatives. In Job's observation, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Only God can rightly say, I give life. And by the way, Jesus claimed this right too. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, we note, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, mm -hmm. and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. The Hebrew, by the way, is El Gibor, which is the most emphatic way of referring to God short of the divine name itself. Everlasting Father or Father of Eternity and Prince of Peace. Also note that in the book of Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 16, these three persons all share the same essence that is Yahweh. Come near to me and hear this. God speaks. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, I was there. So an eternal being is speaking, and now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. This is 800 years before the time of Jesus, but also recognized by him as well. In the Gospel of Mark, the earliest gospel according to liberal scholars, Jesus is being baptized by John the Baptist. The Father speaks from heaven, behold my beloved Son, and the Spirit descends upon him as a dove. This is not in line with the Hindu Trimutri or any demonstrable examples of three divine persons yet sharing that same one essence apart from the number three. We need to clarify doctrine, not just numbers and not just words. Also note, Jesus himself spoke these words where he said, I uh, send you out noting this, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name singular of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things I commanded, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These are things that have formed the foundation of the core of Christianity, and we do have Christians before the time of the Council of Constantinople, the Council of Nicaea, and yes, even the other ecumenical councils before that, recognize these three unique persons that all share the one being. For example, what's the difference? What I am, who I am, those are two different things. My being is human. My person is Sean. If I'm going to recognize the difference, I also need to note if the Hindu Trimutri itself, the word, 
doesn't mean what Christians mean by Trinity. I can't cause correlation in doctrine, especially given that that poem didn't exist until 100 years after the first utilization of the word at the council where Athanasius coined it. And by the way, when you read the Athanasian Creed, you'll find that every single one of the things that define what the Trinity is and isn't are based on the scriptures that I read from the old Jewish scriptures. Yeah. Right. Well, um, quite a lot of those things don't actually mention, you know, a three and three and one concept. Um, and I mean, the the uh, Council of Nicaea, they do mention that we, we believe in the Holy in the Holy Ghost. The Council of Constantinople went a bit further and they referred to the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who with the Father and the Son together is worship. But the the thing, uh, the thing is. When you say about using the, uh, the the term Trinity, but I mean something like the the Hindu, uh, the Hindu one, um, the basic belief there is of one divine being who is composed, if you like, of, of three personalities, and there is a I mean there is a mention, which comes from one of the Upanishads, which dates to the end of the first millennium BC, which says I like to read it so that I get it right. Uh, Brahma, Rudra, and Vishnu. Rudra was an alternate name for Shiva. So it's, uh, Brahma, Rudra, and uh, Vishnu. Some meditate upon one, some upon the other. Tell us, which one is the best? These are foremost forms of the supreme, the immortal, the bodiless Brahman. To whichever deity each man is attached, in its world he rejoices. Yet it is said the whole world is Brahman. These deities, which are its foremost forms, one should meditate upon, worship, and then deny, thus uh, uniting with the universal and attaining union with the soul. Now, I mean, that, that's, that's from the first millennium BC. I mean, the, the first reference to the Hindu tri uh, trinity goes back to between 1500 and 1200 BC. But the, the thing is, there are so many people who don't agree that um, there is anything in the Bible. I mean, the, the Catholic Encyclopedia in 1912 actually said in scripture, there is no single term by which the three divine persons are denoted together. And I think a very interesting quote on that subject is, I do not see in what sense it can be said that there is a consensus of primitive in its favor. The creeds of that early day make no mention of the Trinity at all. And that was by Cardinal John Henry Newman in 1879 in his essay on the development of Christian doctrine, in which year, incidentally, he was made a cardinal for his services to the church. Those services, I presume, including writing that. And um, I mean, the, but to go back to the, the source, if you like, to go back to, to the uh, original, um, we have the greatest, the greatest man, if you like, in Christianity after Jesus Christ himself. We, Saul of Tarsus or the Apostle Paul, if you want to call him that. And this man was the great, uh, the greatest explainer of the Christian faith, if you like. Uh, what is this? Oh, there's something popped up there. This man was the, the greatest explainer of the Christian faith. He lived very close to Jesus's time. And he is regarded as the person to, to go to, you know, for anything. Yet he never mentions the Trinity, and whatever word you use, the concept of three in one. All his epistles commence with the same thing. He says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, in 1 John 1, 3, he says, truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 8, 6, he says, there is one God, the Father of whom are all things and one Lord Jesus Christ. He, he only mentions the Spirit once in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, when he says the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, he never makes any mention of a Trinity in any form you want to see it. He mentions God, he mentions Jesus. But I, I think there's a very good reason for that because he died in 67 AD, which is 314 years before the Council of Constantinople came up with the idea. And even at, the, even at the council, a lot of the bishops didn't agree with it. And quite a few of them were basically chucked out. And Emperor Theodosius was not very, uh, not very pleased with them. In fact, the emperor said, uh, as for the others, since in our judgment, they are foolish madmen, we declare that they shall be branded with the ignominious name of heretics. And he they were 
pretty much chucked out of the church. So, you know, here we, I mean, we go back to a source. We go back to the original. We go back to Paul the Apostle. He makes no mention of this vital thing, which according to the Catholic Church, uh, you ha if you don't believe in this, you're not a Christian. Yet the very, the very man who first explained Christianity doesn't seem to think it's important enough to mention it. I mean, that would be, that would be my take on that one. So. Okay. Uh, you? Thank you. Uh, you had a question, Sean? Except for a Q&A period, uh, how many uh, minutes would we have to ask the question and get the chance to answer and how many back and forths? Oh, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking we can, we can go on as, as long as you guys want, because uh, we have like, the time is not saying here how much time we have left, but at least for another 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So maybe one and take a break and then go at it again. Tell you what, I'll ask two questions and Denton will have the opportunity to answer them. Yep. Uh, we'll take a short break and then Denton can ask me two questions. I'll be given the chance okay. to answer them and then we'll do our closing statements. Yep. Yep. Okay, That's that fine. sounds great. Thank you. All right. I'm uh, sorry, I'm, I'm quite new at this. <laughs> my uh, my uh, two questions are uh, as follows. Um, you kept, again, going back to that interesting uh, illustration and noting that the Hindu Trimutri was dated and as a concept from 1500 to 1200 BC. Remember in my opening statement that you can't establish that unless you have writing, that that was actually what was believed and meant. What is your source for the Hindu Trinity to mean doctrinally the same thing as what Christians meant by the Trinity, even if you only limit yourself to the creed made by uh, Bishop Athanasius? Um, well, the, I mean, the sources are obviously the, the ancient uh, Hindu writings, the Ragvida and the, these other documents. And um, yes, uh, how do I establish it? Well, to me, however, I mean, however you slice it, it seems to me logical that whatever form of deities they see comprising it is that they believe in a single divine being who is three personalities. Um, More than that. And uh, that as a basic concept is the same as the Christian one, not its composition, but in essence, both believe in a single divine being who has three personalities. We actually have the same in, in the Celtic goddesses, Bridget and the Morrigan, who were a single deity who also had three personalities, which is also pretty much the same as the Christian concept, except they were not seen as a supreme being. But, you know, one concept is a supreme being in three parts. The other is a concept of a supreme being in three parts. Fine points about it seem to be a bit irrelevant. It is still basically the same belief, and it goes back a very long way. And, um, and again, I, I come back to Paul. I mean, if this is so important, it's so vital, you can't be a Christian if you don't believe in it. Why does he never mention it? I mean, this, this seems to me a very, very strange, a very, very strange thing. And um, in, in fact, you, you mentioned Jesus when he is asked about the most important commandment. And he says, the Shema Israel, uh, uh, hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, you know. And again, he doesn't say, he says he's one. He doesn't uh, start splitting him up into parts. But uh, no, I, I, I would see the Hindu or indeed the Irish Celtic belief as pretty much the same thing. You know, you can, you can make fine points about, uh, about it, but on the bottom line, both are a single divine being who has three personalities. And I mean, I don't think that's something that really can be it can be argued uh, about. I mean, that would be that would be my take there. Though you probably wouldn't agree. At least we haven't right. come to blows yet, which is good. <laughs> and my second question is uh, regarding that. Um, we'll move on from this until our closing statement, as far as the Hindu source. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to the concept of doctrine, 
what would establish a belief within Christianity that would make it acceptable as the Trinity? Do you need to see the word or do you need to see the concept that God is co-equal, co-eternal and described as Athanasius concluded when addressed by Arius? Well, uh, I suppose I come back to the Apostle Paul. I would like to see him mention three. He constantly mentions two. He mentions God. He mentions Jesus. He only makes one mention of the Spirit. And if the Spirit is part of the three, then it was in his time. And yet he doesn't mention it. And this, uh, this I find very hard to, to reconcile because, as I say, disbelief is a cornerstone, you could call it, the, the rock on which Christianity, or at least in the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox uh, version of it, is based. And if the great explainer of the faith, the man who brought the faith to the Roman Empire, the man who was closest to, to Jesus, if you like, he never mentions it. He mentions two. He mentions God. He mentions Jesus Christ constantly. Never does he mention the spirit and that is the thing I, I have a, a problem with. And as I say, so many people say there is nothing in the, in the Bible uh, about, uh, about that. There was, one, there was one passage, I think it was 1 John 5, 7, which is not found in any Greek version. Um, it only appeared in the 16th century, but it's been dropped from uh, some modern Bibles because it appears to have been just added in later on. But there, you know, there is no scriptural reference to a trinity. I mean, however you want to use the word trinity. Um, you have these constant references to God. And in fact, reference after reference in the Old Testament, but God is one. They stress this point constantly. He is one. They do not make any references to him being a triple, a triple in any form. And getting back to Paul, he does not mention the Holy Spirit in any sense. So you know, this, this to me does uh, make the uh, scriptural uh, claims rather, rather hard to uh, accept. And it has to be also pointed out that there are a lot of inconsistencies in the Bible. Uh, I mean, if you want to go down that road, you can kind of say that there are quite a lot of things in the Old Testament, for example, that are wrong. We, we know they're wrong. Um, the Israeli Department of Archaeology have actually said that the Exodus never happened. There was no flight from Egypt. They rambled around the desert. Um, and that is, as a matter of fact, Israel uh, Finkelstein and Asher Silberman, Israeli archaeologists. And they spent decades looking for proof of it. They couldn't find it. They said that uh, Hebrew settlement in Canaan seems to have gone hand in hand with the Canaanites. And they yeah, dismissed them. the whole thing as, as, as a fable. So, I mean, yeah, they, they do have an inaccuracy. You know? Now, let's John. Yes. Away. All right, uh, that, those are my two questions. I think I've pretty much established the issue here. If you want to take a short break, uh, we'll get the chance for him to ask me two questions and we'll do our closing statement. Yes. Oh, sure. I will, I will invite you once again to, the, to a new meeting because time is going to go out otherwise if we take a pause in this. And uh, so... I'll see you back in how about 15 minutes. I need to check on kids. <laughs> Good man. But, no yeah. problem. We will be here. So for me, it's going to be 4.45. <laughs> so whatever time you have. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm 20.32. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Okay. I will keep an eye out for the notification. We yes. look forward to it. Okay. Bye for now. Bye for now. Okay. There we go. So what we're 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 back. So Danton, you have two questions. So I will mute my mic and let you two go at it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, two, two questions. Well, one would be that an awful lot hinges, if you like, on, on the Bible. And I mean, there are, there are no references to a trinity in whatever form you want to use that word in the Bible. There's nothing that says you know, these are, are one, one is three. But 
I have to say that the the truthfulness, if you like, of the Bible is is in question. And if this is if this is the, the word of God, then everything in it obviously must be true. If even one thing in it is not true, this calls the whole thing into question. And I don't know whether you saw the Israeli statement from Israel Finkelstein and, and Asher Silberman, but it's quite brief. But it's very interesting. And what they said was Exodus did not happen at the time and in the manner described in the Bible. Repeated excavations and surveys throughout the entire area have not provided even the slightest evidence. Modern archaeology suggests continuity between Canaanite and Israelite settlement, indicating a primary Canaanite origin for Israel. Um, so one, one question I would have would be on this, the historical accuracy of the Bible, because we do have things in it which do not seem to be true. The people who wrote it appear to have possessed only the scientific knowledge of their time. Um, and if God had dictated it, well, he would know He would know the truth. I mean, they say that, you know, the world was created in, in, in everything was created in six days, which may be true, but if it was, then he did it 4.5 billion years ago. And he seemed to be, have rather forgotten that. Um, so that is, that is a one question, question in our future. Yeah. Yep. You want to do you want to reply to that or do you want me to yes the, the question let him reply yeah the question the uh, another, question another question right well no um i need no, no, a no. question to answer a question he needs ah, to, yeah. uh, well like <laughs> I, I thought i said there like how do you how do you um answer the inconsistencies um in the bible that do not match up to what we know as a scientific a scientific fact um you know this this would be one question uh, I would have. It may not be directly related to the Trinity, but it is related to the overall validity of, of, of a lot of these texts. And I, I just would like to see uh, see what you what you I'll say. tell you John. what. Since uh, this is a meeting of goodwill, um, we're not going to address questions that aren't on the topic of the debate. That would be a violation of the rules that we agreed to mm -hmm. beforehand. But uh, I'll still allow you two more questions that are on the topic of the Trinity. And just as a gesture of friendship, I'll uh, happily give my answer to that just as free time. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, when we talk about the total absence of evidence regarding the Exodus, that is actually an outdated statement. There was an archaeological dig under the city of Ramses, which they believe was an anachronism because it wasn't called Ramses during the time of Moses in the 14th century BC. Uh, when we dig underneath Ramses' ruins, we actually find another city by the name of Avaris. Now, in the book of Exodus, Pharaoh uh, uh, oppressed the people of Israel with hard labor and forced them to not only continue to supply their daily quota of bricks, but to require all of the materials themselves. Mm -hmm. This was more than could be expected. So we're looking for, as the pattern was shown in Exodus, what we can measure, not what we can't. And so what they were looking for were temples, structures, buildings that had reducing amounts of straw, and they found it in several temples in this city known as Avaris. Mm -hmm. Now, this was below the city of Ramses, and it actually fell in line with the timeline of the Exodus. Likewise, when uh, the statement was made that the uh, cultural and scientific claims were limited to their time, uh, that is not entirely accurate. There was a book written called None of These Diseases I recommend you look into. And you can go into the ideas of what not only was available at their time, but how they were making observations that were only further made by, uh, uh, what was his name, uh, Galen, who was a Greek physician. And he was, of course, much later in history by about 1,200 years uh, regarding the dietary laws and so forth. As far as, and this is the third and final part of that question, the issues of conflicts with modern scientific data. Remember that much like with the premise of our debate, you have to make presuppositions before approaching the evidence. If I'm dating the universe to, and note that the number is uh, consistently changing. When I was in school, it was around 80 billion years. When you were around, it was around 40 billion years. And I'm sure today, uh, your and your kids are hearing that it's a somewhat of a trillion year universe. So either everything that we were told in the belief of those things in the past was a lie, or this isn't a solid statement of fact. What they're doing is reading into a system, which is what we talked about earlier, 
of naturalism, which is atheistic by its assumptions, without allowing for an intervening cause. Now, you believe, uh, and this is just a, a broad statement, Asatru makes the claim that when the realms of cold and heat combined in the Glinga Gap, that formed the first fraught giant Ymir, and from him came the Azir, the Vanir, and everything else out of his sweat. Now, um, or rather licked out of it by a cow that just showed up somehow. Uh, when we acknowledge the bare bones of that, we're acknowledging a moment in which something caused something else. Yeah, yeah. That's also acknowledged in the Bible and the law of causality is in fact fund fundamental for an orderly universe. If you want to look more into this, I recommend reasonablefaith.org, where William Lane Craig goes into the Kalam cosmological argument, the fine-tuning argument, and the Lebin's contingency arguments. Uh, but none of those things were regarding the topic of our debate, so that, that's just a free one. Uh, two more questions for the Trinity and uh, regarding its pagan roots. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I mean, I see a point about that. Like, in, in a way, the validity, if you like, of the Bible is is relative in, in certain ways. But anyway, uh, bypassing that, and that, that's a very interesting uh, um, uh, little uh, summary you made there. Uh, well, the one is, um, it seems to me, that the similarities between the Christian, uh, the, the Christian uh, trinity of the one being, which is three, is basically the same as the Hindu one being, which is three, or as the Irish goddess is one being, which is three. And these do predate the Christian times. Um, that the only, the only references, the only references to uh, a Trinity did not occur until we come down to the, to the councils. So my, my question would be, uh, in what way do you not think that uh, beings described as being triple yet one are not the same. This is the concept of triple uh, and one I'm talking about, not any religious aspects or any variations. It's simply the concept of a being which is also three. And I mean, that I think is, is the, the bottom line. That would be one, one question. All right. Um, as I stated before, we need to first recognize that in a polytheistic background, the concept and doctrine of God is going to be vastly different from a monotheistic presupposition in a religion. If I read in an atheistic system, if I read in a pantheistic system, mm -hmm. then those presuppositions for what they mean by God are going to vary differing yes, to I, I what agree. that is going to mean. I, I see so, it. Yes. So if I, for example, go to, and I'm providing the source and citation here, the Kumara Sumbhava, that is a full century after the Athanasian Creed. So even if I grant the point that the Athanasian Creed invented the Trinity because of the word, remember that in a monotheistic concept or context, the one being that is God shared by three co-eternal, co-equal persons is not limited to the terms one and three. That's what's called parallelism. And it's a fallacy of composition if you say, because of the common number, it's therefore the same doctrine and belief. When I made my case, I was careful to only establish passages from the Old Testament, which predates Christianity and these councils. And note as well, all of these councils determine those things based Based on whether or not they deviated from Old Testament Jewish scriptures. So in regards to the accuracy thereof or not, that's irrelevant to the conversation. We need to establish a chain of transmission. The definition and translation of the word trimutri is three forms. That is a heresy called modalism, which is not what Christians mean by the Trinity, because any deviation or alteration to these texts is the definition of a false doctrine. Uh, and again, um, regard, focusing in on the question that was asked, what reason do I have not to, and I want to make sure that I'm quoting this, so can you give me the question again, not to believe that Trin the Trinity was what? Um, that, like you say, uh, that the basic concept of a being who is one and yet three, it doesn't really matter in what sense you see that, how you approach it from a religious point of view, or what, what you want to read into it in any other way. I'm talking about a basic concept of one being that can also be three, that is the same. Uh, and in the, in the Hindu sense, it predates Christianity by a very, very long way. The Irish Celtic goddesses existed long before Christianity. And well, we can clarify that in our closing statement. I just asked to clarify your first question. Yeah, well, that, that, that was the question. I mean, 
it, uh, do you not agree that it really doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, way we, we look at it? The basic concept is a being who can be one and yet three. It does, it, you know, regardless of how you... One sense and in another sense or in the same sense, one being and three beings. One being, which is also three beings. In other words, one being... That is not what Christians believe by the Trinity. It, yes, it is. It's God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is three. Who is are the also. Father the Son? Yes. Uh, no. God Father the and I are one that is noting in purpose, but notice Jesus prays to the Father. Is he praying to himself or is he in communion with something? Well, that, 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 is, that is rather interesting because Jesus does actually, uh, I mean, say that he doesn't know something God knows. Yes, because he had incarnated in human nature. He had but, limited his nature to a finite perspective. After his resurrection, he said, it is not given to you to know. That's Acts chapter 1. And I'm giving citation. We don't have any citation for Hindu sources or Celtic sources until the 5th century. Uh, well, Hindu sources date back to like 1500 BC. That's a long Name time. one. Um, and the, the thing that I read from uh, is towards the end of the first millennium BC. That is. We need a name. What? Well... Uh, I will try and I will try and actually pronounce it. Like uh, you, you were uh, having a go at one of them there, and they are not. Well, very sympathy, I know. <laughs> the, uh, ma, what's it? The might Rayania uh, uh, Punishment, or something like that. And that um, contains the concept of pantheism, uh, tritheism, uh, or polytheism. Well, that, that was the quote. Excuse me, gentlemen. Yes? Excuse me, gentlemen. It would be a good choice also that while we have some references and stuff like that. Let's uh, send them to each other so both of you can look them up. Yeah, the chat's names right there. and yes, yeah, like can do that. Can do that. Like the, the, write right, them down um, in the second chat question. And, yes, yes the, the, it's just that the, the the basic idea. I mean, the, the the Christian Trinity is God who is also uh, you know in a triple form. The Hindu idea is a, a supreme being who is in a triple form. The Irish goddess is were beings in a triple form. That would be, the, that's, well, that's, you, you've answered that. The, my other question would be, back to the Apostle Paul. If, if you cannot be a Christian, if you do not believe in the Trinity, if you don't believe in the Trinity, that's it, you're out. You can't be a Christian. This is so vital, so important, yet this great early explainer of Christianity, who brings it to the Roman Empire, doesn't consider it important enough to even mention it. He makes one passing reference to the Spirit. So, you know, if that doctrine existed in Paul's time, why did he not mention it? I mean, it, it, it seems to me very, very strange because he only ever mentions God and Jesus. He never makes any reference to the spirit. He never mentions them as, as uh, a trinity in whatever sense you want to use the word. So that would be my, my question on, on that one. How do you reconcile that with the apparent vital necessity of the trinity in order to be a Christian with the greatest exponent of the religion, never even mentioning it. Okay, so. All right, um, so the vital component, understand why there are non-negotiables for what a religion is and isn't. Uh, Christianity has its foundation in Judaism and Paul was a Jewish scholar taught under the rabbi Gamaliel and noted and attested in multiple sources by atheist scholars and Christian alike. Now, if he were to be teaching these things and writing them all down, we can't base all of Christian doctrine on his summaries and letters to his churches or the churches rather that he planted. Otherwise, it would be called Paulianity. Everything in the Bible is a unified and core fundamental doctrine. And if I look at this passage or this passage, that's what's called the cherry picking fallacy. But if I look for as many possible associations with the same term, the same doctrine, and the same belief, I form the belief. So when a Christian is approaching a uh, sacred text. They don't start in Romans and end in Philemon. They start in Genesis and go to Revelation. And if Paul did not mention in his letters the Trinity, it's firstly because the word itself wouldn't be invented for another 300 years. But the concept, the doctrine, the belief predates Christianity by over 400 years if you count Malachi and only go to the written sources that we have in the Dead Sea Scrolls, of which we have a complete copy of 
Isaiah, where I based my fundamental understanding of the Trinity in chapter 48, verse 16. So uh, I can't just look to Paul as this expositor because his letters were addressing specific issues. Apparently, it was apparent for the early churches to know God's nature. And as it was revealed in Jesus Christ, they had the gospels, they had the prophets, and Paul references these things constantly. Also note that Peter, the apostle Peter, the apostle John, the apostle Jude, and the author of Hebrews, who is unknown, all make references to this Old Testament in order to establish their doctrine, which are essentially just being reviewed. A uh, classic saying between me and my father that the Old Testament is the New Testament explained, the New Test or uh, illustrated, the Old Testament is the New Testament il um, explained, the New Testament is the Old Testament illustrated. So if we want an explanation of Christian scripture, we don't look for one author and say, this establishes Christianity. We don't look to one verse and say, this defines Christianity. Christianity. We don't look to a church council unless they are in line with what defines Christianity. And what defines Christianity is the entire witness of scripture, not just one author within it. The issues he addressed were specific and set to those times. If the Trinity was that vital, and it is, it would have to have been established by a higher authority, Jesus of Nazareth, which it was. Hmm. Well, yes, but uh, you see, I, I think this is... Two uh, questions. Kind of... Yes, uh, Denton. Yeah. It's uh, he answered the questions, yeah. So, we're gonna have to go to closing statements, right. I would believe. Right, well, um, does he, he, he like to go first? I uh, started, so you uh, go first and I'll go last. Okay, okay, right. Um, well, my closing statement would be that I mean, I, I, I still come back to the like of Paul, but he produced a, a huge amount of uh, writings. And, and again, if this was so important, why did he not mention, and I'm not talking about the word Trinity. Yes, they hadn't come up with that one. I'm talking about mentioning three uh, rather than just God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Never does he mention Trinity in the sense of three beings, which I find very, very strange. If it was so vitally important, why, why did he not uh, mention it? Uh, that just uh, seems to me to be very hard to answer. Um, it's not. It's not a matter of sort of going from Genesis to the, and working through the Bible. Um, you know, it's. I do still feel that it is very, very hard to understand why he would not. He would not uh, mention it. Not using the word Trinity, of course, but in some form. Um, so, whether I mean, I, I don't know how far we've actually um, established anything. I. I, I I suppose uh, uh, to conclude, I could say, well, we've we've depleted the Earth's already diminishing supply of oxygen to some extent, trying to find a common ground between polar opposites. But I, I think we have established a consensus that we have no consensus, that we're kind of where we started from, though, though perhaps with a, a mutual better understanding of why we were there to start with, if I can if I can put it that way. So I think that would be my closing uh, closing statement uh, on on that. Okay, Sean. All right, and uh, in conclusion to the debate, uh, I want to thank you, Bjorn, for hosting and Denton for very graciously spending the time here to talk about these things. Although I not only have to disagree with the premise, but the outcome of this debate, I think the time was very well spent in that when we had the chance to ask each other questions, you and I quote said, we did not come to blows. This is an example both for our followers and for, oh, well, both for our followers, yes. both your followers and mine, in noting that there is in fact an established case here, that we can talk about these things, disagree, and still do so in a way where we have an ongoing relationship in which I enjoy while still watching your videos and hope that the same will be the case. When we're talking about the topic of this debate, though, I also think there was something accomplished in the confusion and equivocation of two terms in noting three persons and three beings that was not what we defined is the Trinity. Also note that I was not given permission to define my own beliefs, and yet the liberty was provided on the other hand for that to be done for you. Understand that when Christianity was defined with a consistent and coherent presentation of scripture or the behavior of early Christians, Denton had to resort to the behavior or the conclusions of Christians rather than the actual writings. 
also note Christianity, was it presented in line with the example and teachings of Jesus Christ, or did he have to dovetail to the abuse of those things in councils and by Paul? The definition of Christianity is in Jesus Christ, and Paul is correct, and then as he says in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, follow me as I follow Christ. Was the Bible used to support every claim about uh, Christianity or the Trinity in order to establish association or just words and terms? Every tie back to the Hindu Trimutri as our lone source was not only cited, but avoided in order to make the equivocation. The Bible was not used to define the Trinity, but the Hindu sources were used to define the Trimutri, and it was assumed to be the other way around, which is unfair. Ultimately, this is what it comes down to. The definition of the Trinity, like any fundamental doctrine of Christianity, is the unique belief based on the teachings, example, and theology presented by Jesus of Nazareth in the first century. Based on his teachings, example, and theology going from the Old Testament back to the 14th century BC in existence, the establishment of these doctrines were clarified by individuals in history who knew their Bibles, thus the councils. Likewise, cults and heresies are rightly determined by their deviation or manipulation from these core doctrines. Paganism as a fluid theology cannot claim the Trinity originated from its roots due to the following facts. The definition of the Trinity as established in scripture is in no way parallel to the writings of any pagan system until after the time it was established from the time of Moses in the 14th century to the first century AD by Jesus of Nazareth. When an opportunity was presented to do so, it was either, uh, and note, I'm fully aware of my mispronunciations, but failed to be given or ultimately dismissed. Second, the doctrine of the Trinity was recognized, not invented, by early church fathers who knew their Bibles. The Athanasian Creed limited what the Trinity was and wasn't based on the structure set in place where the doctrine came from, that is, the Bible. Third, the practices of Christians in no way add or alter the definition of Christianity. They would be classified as heretics if they attempted to alter doctrine from scripture, and they would be cults if they attempted to add doctrine beyond scripture, or they would be completely at liberty to worship the true and living God in their own ways, but in line with scripture, because that would define Christianity consistently. Fourth, the theology of paganism is either established after the core beliefs were in Christian scripture or are based on blind faith assumptions without any written evidence. Now, note this point. The assumptions and the interpolations based on the information available a long time after the foundation of Christianity and the passages that compose the Trinity are the assumptions that because this religion existed before Christ, it always taught the same thing. But as in the video that you will be able to watch on Denton's channel, he notes that paganism isn't necessarily limited to religion. Christianity and Judaism are. In noting and making the accusation of borrowing, you have to establish a chain of transmission, not based on the assumption that if it existed before paganism, therefore Christianity borrowed from it. Just like I won't say because the Edis exists after Christianity, it borrowed from it. I'll let other minds do that. And finally, if I'm going to and properly define paganism, Christianity and Judaism would make these conclusions impossible going by your own statements. Judaism is not pagan, and I quote, but Christianity's core doctrines are based on Judaism. Therefore, Christian doctrines can't be pagan. Given the fact that the alterations and deviations were either attacking the integrity of the Old Testament, which wasn't our topic, in going into church councils, which in no way add to or take from scripture unless they are first defined by them, and of course the behavior of Christians, none of which of this concluding statement was altered. I encourage everyone here reading, read the ecumenical councils in what's called the rudder. It's available for PDF online. Look up the Sanskrit definition of Trimutri and understand that Trinity, as Christians understand it, is an inaccurate presentation of our doctrine. And lastly, please give me the liberty as a pastor and a person who spends daily answering Bible questions to know what I believe compared to someone who's being critical of it. I give you the same liberty and respect when I go to your channel for Odinism. Make sure that you are able to and willing to provide the same respect to me when I go to your channel to define and find out the facts for Asatru and Odinism. Uh, Bjorn, again, thank you for the time, and that is all I will have to say regarding this debate. Well, thank you both, gentlemen. I have to say it was, uh, for me, it was so mesmerizing to watch you talk, so it was hard to 
to kind of stop you while you go on. <laughs> but uh, uh, I would say that you both made very clear statements. I mean, uh, I myself, as you probably know, um, um, have pagan beliefs, but I'm actually married to a Christian wife. <laughs> so I go to church as often as I can on Sundays. So I'm, I found this to be the best, like, to hear from both of your sides because, and I hope that most people that are, have been listening to this, that they can come to the same conclusion as me, that we can take from what you both say. I mean, it's, it's the same thing when everyone is saying basically like, he said this and he did that. Yeah. We can think so, we can know so, we, everyone cannot be 100% sure, but that's also what faith is all about, isn't it? We have to believe that we have to have the security in our hearts, what we think is true. To some you extent. and I can have a conversation about that if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> it was certainly very really interesting and, uh, uh, and certainly Sean, I mean, I, I, I hope I, I give you respect uh, as well and uh, it's been nice talking to you and i i would uh, like as far as both of us is concerned I, I think i would i would quote voltaire who said i may not agree with your opinion but i will fight to the death for your right to express it yes. uh, which i think is a very good quote you know so uh, i i certainly enjoyed it it was very it was very interesting we'll probably never agree but it, well, at least we disagreed nicely and that's very important you know? half the goal of us gathering here. Now, our next debate is going to be on the virgin birth. Obviously, we want to make sure we're read up on our sources. So that'll be in the next few weeks. Uh, Bjorn, you let us know when you're available. We oh, love having course. you as a host. And thank you. Uh, Very the, uh, do you have any comments about my, on, on the overall debate climate? Was it good or should I improve in some points? Because this is my first time doing anything <laughs> like this. I thought it was hand on the timer. What? Your hand on the timer and the uh, willingness to cut off if we either get off topic oh, or yeah. if there is some deviation. Yes. You were very good yep. about that. That's yep. all that's expected of you. Yes. Yeah. I, I, but I, like I said, when I'm listening to something, it became mesmerizing <laughs> when you both were talking about stuff. Well, I'm that's like, good. oh, I need to stop someone. That, that's <laughs> good because we, we must have been at least interesting. So I like, so that's good. I'm glad you got mesmerized. Yeah. I hope both. Sean's followers and Denton's followers will find this debate as as information giving as it was for me. I hope so. Hopefully. Certainly. And I'm looking forward to schedule the next debate. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't have any funny helmets. Oh, well, don't worry about it. I bought yourself a kilt. <laughs> I have my grandmother's, <laughs> grandmother's dolls. That will have to do. Yes. How about this? Next time the leader of the, the debate can be my grandmother's doll. I just put her up here. It's like an old vintage. <laughs> yeah. Do you find them scary too? I found them really <laughs> creepy. That's why she's down here, not up here. <laughs> oh. So thank you very much, Sean. Thank you very much, Denton. And uh, we'll see if the recordings were recorded properly. <laughs> That's I'm gonna check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, uh, like I said, Sean, I will try and send you the first half of the debate since you were missing your own sound. So thank you very much, and I would say good morning, good evening, or good night, depending on where we are. <laughs> All of those to you. I will <laughs> wish you. Goodbye, Mas. <laughs> yeah, well, how you That's correct. I will wish you a good lure dog, as we say in Swedish. A good Saturday. A Saturn day. Very good. <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you very much. Uh, that's it for now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now.